Welcome to Learn with Hack the Box, a unique YouTube series focused on fast tracking your career path in either offensive or defensive cybersecurity. Whether you're an aspiring SOC analyst or pen tester, stay tuned for exclusive tutorial style content from experienced security professionals who will guide you on your journey through cutting edge tips and resources. So by the end of this episode, we'll discover things like what incident response actually is, the skills you need to work in the space, how to navigate through multiple stages of a cyber incident, as well as how Hack the Box can actually help. So whether you're looking to pivot your career or deepen your expertise in cybersecurity, this guide will be able to provide you a solid foundation to get you moving and grooving, hitting the ground running. To kick things off, I want you to think about your typical work day. Everything is moving and grooving, smooth sailing. It's a typical Wednesday. And all of a sudden you see Jerry's computer from accounting reaching out to a foreign IP address. Your security tools are firing off, red lights, you know, critical alerts, and he's not even working today. There are packets on the line, there are over the wire, and there is no reason as to why this should be happening. Or if you're on your website, you notice it is down due to a DDoS attack. Not only denying transactions, hemorrhaging money, but you're now actually damaging the reputation of the enterprise. A cybersecurity incident is any event that involves unauthorized access, use, disruption, modification, disclosure, or destruction of information or assets. So while an incident can range from a minor data breach to a significant cyber attack, an incident is an incident and must be treated with extreme care and urgency. Going through these cases, uh, we'll find that incidents themselves might be unique, but the way we handle them is very procedural in nature and we can follow frameworks to get us through our way. Prior to an incident, it's important to reduce your vulnerabilities and attack surfaces in your environment, defining your policies and procedures ahead of time before things get too hot. In the preparation phase, organizations conduct things like risk assessments, vulnerability scans, as well as audits to current detection mechanisms. This phase also includes things like writing and defining security procedures, defining roles and responsibilities, and updating systems. Most organizations regularly revisit this phase of the incident response because this is where your, your TTPs, your QRGs, your SOPs, these are the, the maturity of your whole program rises in this particular phase. Shout out to all my GRC analysts out there, the policy folks, the unsung heroes of the space. In any given day, a security team is faced with thousands, if not tens of thousands of alerts, and the majority of those being false positive, not necessarily incident worthy. Now, when an alert does become an incident, that's where things kind of change. Your tempo, everything is just a, a higher amperage. So we start annotating our findings. We start saying, you know, hey, what is the security breach? What is the type of attack? Uh, what could these motives even be? Kind of posturing ourselves for what kind of play we're going to be making and then we get the stakeholders involved letting them know what those next steps are going to be for it could impact production they need to know they need to be aware of what's going on so after identifying the threat the next highest priority in this whole chain of events is containing said threat that we have a, a threat actor in our environment and we need to isolate we need to quarantine we need to prevent them from moving any further in our environment the opportunity of lack Lateral movement is always high, so containing an internet asset, systems that could be affected, any sort of uh, foothold that they may have, we need to stop that and, and, and keep the bleeding to a minimum before we can move on to our next space. Once containment has been completed, this is where the eradication of the threat actor comes into play. So we're going to go through, we're going to say, hey, we're going to... Uh, establish how they, they have that connection and sever it. We're then going to remove any persistence mechanisms like the malware, the uh, the back doors, what, the footholds, how they're in our environment and remove them all at the same time. A synchronized event, uh, blocking IP address, web domains, any way that they can get in, we need to block it at the same time so they can't just maneuver and do the dance and reestablish those persistence mechanisms. Now, this is a little bit harder and it's, it's easier said than done, uh, but once this is done, uh, we are letting our stakeholders know as time goes, uh, the progress that's being made, the things that we've done to make sure that uh, everyone's in the know, in the loop.
as incidents vary in complexity and severity, so does the recovery time. It could be anywhere from hours to days. I've seen weeks where a system would need to be recovered from backups, um, verifying that the same footholds they were able to get into before aren't just reestablished. So the, the restoration and the getting things back online phase is extremely important, but it's a very um, time consuming process. When the incident is resolved, this is where we start to develop our lessons learned phase, your after action reports. The you need to go through there and verify how this happened, why this happened, and how do we prevent this from happening again. Making sure our detection mechanisms are, are right, you know, and set up properly. Um, <laughs> this basically pumps back into the preparation phase. You almost have like a loop. Uh, to where the, the cycle never really ends because as long as there's an incentive for bad guys to get in, they're gonna try to get back in. They've been kicked out, they're probably upset and they wanna get back in and establish that foothold, get more of that juicy information, that data. So it never really stops. You know, we, we sharpen our swords and we reinforce our shields and we're just ready for the next battle. But that's that's kind of the fun of it. You know, as long as there's information to be had and it's worth having, you know, we're gonna have to defend it. Now, speaking of defending the enterprise, your cybersecurity incident responder is a little bit more advanced than your average SOC analyst, a little bit more technical in nature. So we do expect them to interface with your adjacent teams to get an incident under control, but we also expect a certain amount of technical prowess and some you know, understanding and readiness in the following skills. Skills in collecting, preserving, and analyzing digital evidence off of various different devices, as well as proficiency in certain tools like NCASE, FTK or autopsy allow you to find things that might not be visible in plain sight. There are also some instances where IT assets aren't forwarding logs in a way that you can easily see on your SIM or your SOAR, and being able to acquire that information for analysis is extremely important. Malware analysis, or the ability to go into malicious software and kind of see the behavior behind the scenes, is an extremely important skill in incident response. Being able to use things like IDA Pro or OllieDBG or just any sort of like sandbox environment allows you to really get an understanding of what's going on behind the scenes, how things are, are interacting with outside assets like um, command and control centers. It allows us to create these indicators of compromise or IOCs and enhance our detections in our SIM or SOAR to prevent future attacks down the road. Understanding network protocols, your environment's architecture, and then just how data moves across the line, how it interfaces with things like your IDS or your IPS. It's important to know the flow of your data and your traffic, so that way if you needed to capture some sort of information, you can do analysis with Wireshark and have a good understanding if the activity is indeed malicious or not. Knowledge of securing your endpoints, you know, whether it's from themselves or from an outside source is extremely important. Leveraging these uh, endpoint detection and response tools, these EDRs like uh, Carbon Black, uh, CrowdStrike, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. It really allows you to create your own custom queries and your detections to keep an eye on your environment, making sure there's not lateral conversations amongst endpoints, uh, unapproved software, uh, things that you could do manually if it was a smaller footprint, but once you get into an enterprise environment, it's extremely important to be able to understand how these tools work and how to leverage them. Bar none, the, the expertise needs to lie in log analysis. This is where we can take from our, our, our uh, appliances, things like firewalls, your, your systems, your, your web servers, things like the applications, sysmon logs, Windows event, what have you. You can take the events from these logs and then pair them with things like log viewers, event viewers, or your command line tools. You can then kind of understand what's going on here, how to parse through that and start developing a timeline. You can develop an enterprise log management platform and then aggregate that into your tool of choice, Splunk, Greylog, uh, Elkstack, again, what have you. The, the whole idea is you can take the logs themselves, marry them with other data, and then develop your narrative, your timeline. You know 
bias aside, using the logs themselves. You know, there's no logs, there's no crime, so you have to be able to use the evidence at hand. The logs typically don't lie. <laughs> Now, maybe it's more of a soft skill, but <laughs> it is extremely important to annotate any sort of findings you're doing when performing analysis. Now, I'll put an example of an incident response report in the description. Uh, this one does have some hack the box branding on it, but it's extremely comprehensive. It's very thorough. You can use this in your environment, pull some things from it, you know, do with it as you please. But it's extremely important to annotate, you know, your findings as well as how it fits into a timeline so that way you can properly convey what's going on here. So again, go ahead and use that report. Just leave a like, you know, subscribe, the whole YouTube algorithm thing to help us out. Now I mentioned it in the first video, but having some level of proficiency in a scripting language is a must. With incident response, we're looking at like intermediate level scripting for things like Python, Bash, and PowerShell. But um, <laughs> being able to understand and what's going on in your environment with those skills is is a necessary skill. Being able to craft out your own tools, being able to see, because uh, I'd say PowerShell logging is a must nowadays. So being able to see things like uh, living off the land activities, you know, wall bass. Um, being able to go through and say, hey, I'm gonna go through and decrypt or decode this uh, um, command that's being ran in my environment. Uh, a lot of times the stuff's not just done in plain text. It, it is encoded. So being able to go through and decode it and see it is very important. Uh, crafting up tools for things like uh, sorting out indicators of compromise or you know sifting through event logs. It's just a must. It's a must. Uh, and so it's, it's a very low bar to enter. There's many you know YouTube channels and other places you can go to learn this kind of stuff. But it, it's definitely at this point you need to know it. Now, if you haven't familiarized yourself with the Hack the Box Academy offerings, they actually have an incident response career path playlist that has all the skills we talked about today and then some. It also covers the CDSA, or the Cyber Defense Security Analyst Certification, a new blue team offering by Hack the Box. And if that wasn't enough, Hack the Box recently introduced a blue team equivalent of their challenging machines known as the Sherlocks. Now, the, these challenge boxes are a little bit more investigation style in nature. They have more of like a scenario to them themselves. You they basically provide you a hand-on practice on specific tasks and they're replicating real life scenarios, a little bit more realistic. Um, these are a little bit different than the Academy offerings in that these are more challenge based. You kind of walk through a, uh, a generalized topic as opposed to like, here's a specific thing you're learning, here's a specific thing we want to know. It's more of a, hey, you know, this uh, fictional event happened, you know, what do you do now? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, these are really nice because these are a little more realistic compared um, to like your typical capture the flags. These are more, you know, here's the file, do the analysis, use these tools to do it. Um, it, it again, more narrow scope. So it allows you to hone in on specific skills. And then this will basically allow you to compile a nice portfolio of things uh, in conjunction with the Academy items with the CDSA certification, very well-rounded incident responder. It's extremely important to remember that incident response is not for the faint of heart. Debatably, it is the hardest job in the blue team side of the house. You know, you have vendors being compromised, uh, data breaches. Uh, <laughs> if, if everything was perfect even, the attackers would be social engineering your end users. You know, it really takes some serious grit and some critical thinking in a holistic way. But if you can, you know, persevere through all of this, you can really, you know, keep your ear to the ground, listen to the landscape, how things are changing, you know, just, just keeping a pulse on things, it is debatably one of the most rewarding jobs out there. You know, it, it's never stale, it's constantly changing, and it just takes a little bit of effort. You know, if you can be a forever learner and, and keep yourself going, it, it is one of the better jobs you can have. Now, if you want to take your hacking adventure to the next level, you're going to watch this video right here, where we discuss learning ethical hacking from scratch. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a good one.